buckle up and hold tight. This is Unforeseen. See that? That's See that? that was First beautiful. time I pressed the button, it worked. Yeah, you yeah. Have one button to press. Four episodes, <laughs> and I am now a seasoned veteran. Everybody, what's the crack? You're listening to Unforeseen, the podcast that is truly unforeseen because I don't see the stuff before it happens. That's the it's the, it's the gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ross Brown. Uh, I'm your host, and uh, we have. Uh, of course, as always, our producer extraordinaire, uh, Lorraine is in with us as well. Lorraine, uh, let me ask you, right, because I know I'm having the fucking absolute crack doing this podcast. How do you, how are you finding it? Because you're the one that has to, uh, you're the one that has to cultivate all this madness. I'm loving it because basically I'm doing what I always did anyway, but now I just have so I have an outlet to share the weird mm-hmm. stuff that I find on the internet. So yeah. basically, nothing's really changed except I have to just you know give it to you. Okay, so it's like, why are you looking at a man piercing his own ears? You're like, uh, for work. Yeah, now I have an excuse for it. Before I didn't have an excuse. <laughs> Let's get into uh, this week's podcast. We are talking dating now. All right. Because back in 1987, long before Tinder and Bumble, some men were so desperate to find love that they <gasps> paid a company called Video Mate. I love these things. To make a videotape profile to be viewed by potential lovers. So this was done on state-of-the-art camcorders. Oh, wow. There's there's funky graphics and groovy music to go oh, along with this. I love this We've stuff. got a compilation of oh. uh, some of these profile videos to show you. Now, bear in mind, this is from the 80s, so the quality of the video is a little bit blurry. Okay, no problem. But, but it's what they say is what counts. Yeah. Oh, I bet you these guys are going to be so suave and, and there's oh. going to be nothing wrong with them whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, early to bid. I was wrong. <laughs> the first guy already looks like one of those generic players that you create on a WWE game. <laughs> He's like, do you know the make a wrestler ones? Yeah. Where you just stick mustaches and mullets. Bed, early to rise, makes a woman healthy, wealthy and wise. <laughs> early to bed, early to rise, makes a woman, not, not his own health he's concerned no, no, about, no. wealthy, healthy, and wise. And wise. Mm-hmm. Wow, fucking hell. That's fortune cookie wisdom there, isn't it? <laughs> Why you're wiser than me. It's Stephen. I'm thick. I'm thick. Hey, I'm, I'm Stephen. I am thick. That's why you're wiser than me. <laughs> That's got nothing to do with anything what nothing he just said. <laughs> whatsoever. He may as well have said avocados are allergic to dust. <laughs> I'm Stephen. <laughs> I'm Stephen. <laughs> oh, this guy is all sorts of serial killer, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> This is the guy that's like, yeah, I'll help you search for her. <laughs> Hi, I'm Maurice. I'm an executive by day and a wild man by night. An executive by day and a wild man by night. Not even wild, he's a wild man. A wild. A wild. <laughs> he's so cool he got an extra H. Yeah, he's a wild. Wild. He's wild, but he doesn't do it immediately. <laughs> it takes him a wild. Hi, my name's Monroe. Jesus, yes you are, aren't you? Fucking hell. <laughs> by Wallace and Gromit creators. Uh, you've probably already noticed that I have incredibly blue eyes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell. I'm Did you notice him. his blue eyes though? I didn't. His eyes were like... <laughs> I don't think they're blue. <laughs> Are you serious? I don't think they're blue. But they're, you can't, they're like pinholes anyway. Like you can't, all you can see is just a shadow where eyes should be. This guy looks like you ordered Ron Howard on Wish. <laughs> Hi, my name is Phil. Uh, most of my friends call me Big Phil. <laughs> oh, oh, Matthew McConaughey from Dallas Buyers Club. Exactly what I was thinking. What the fuck? Exactly what I was thinking. What the fuck? Wow. Okay. Um, I like to talk to people uh, deep into the night. <laughs> <clears throat> I know this guy has no concept of lens whatsoever. <laughs> he's like, I like to talk to people deep into the night. Is he? Does he currently think he's talking to someone deep into? He's like, where are you? I'm but again, just... he's not saying he he likes to talk to like you know his his girlfriend or you know he doesn't like like he's just saying random people. He, just like, deep it could into be anybody. The night. Yeah, just <laughs> I'll talk to anyone late at night. People in a ditch <laughs> under a bus. <laughs> Hi, my name's Mike. Fucking hell, Mike! Wow. Wow, he looks like an extra from the Wonder Years. <laughs> <laughs> they all kind of do, though. 
what's what's with the 80s that they produce this many catastrophes of human beings? But you ever notice that when you see, you know, videos from the 80s and people that are in their 20s and 30s, why did they always look like they were 50 or 60? Yeah. And they look younger 20 years later. What was the story with that? I don't understand. I don't understand. Was it the facial hair? Did that make them look older? Mustaches don't help. No. Like I've never seen somebody without a mustache and then with a mustache and went, ah, a vast improvement. (laughs) Whereas I've seen him. Tom Selleck. I've never seen him without. Have you not? I've never seen him without. He's been in a few things without it. Has he? Yeah, he has. Yeah. And he does look better with the tash. Does he now? He does. Yeah, yeah. But that's a strong tash. Yeah. He's got a very strong tash. Yeah. This thing. This thing looks kind like an anemic person's eyebrow. This is horrific. That is so visual. <laughs> <laughs> it's hor- and by the way, what's with the mom glasses? Oh, yeah. Like, Jesus Christ, like fish bowls on his eyes. This is... <sighs> First guy, alpha male. Mm. Like, for, yeah. okay, at, least he, at least he had some... Something about him that was like, oh, he goes to the gym. Yeah. He's got a bit of discipline. He's obviously yeah. got a routine. Early to bed, early to rise, makes one healthy, wealthy, and wise. You know what I mean? This guy makes no impression on me. None whatsoever. He looks like one of Casper's uncles. And if you're sitting there watching this tape, smoking your cigarette, well, hit the fast forward button because I don't smoke and I don't like people who do smoke. Boom. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> With your fucking black lung. I also love his angle to the camera. He's, he's 45. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's 45. He's the side on yeah. profile. You know? Yeah, which isn't very flattering. No, no, no. You think? But I think you he, think you think he'd be a straight up. I think he thinks he's stately looking. You know, by doing that side angle. What do you mean, like the largest state in America, <laughs> Texas? <laughs> <laughs> but my friends call me Long Island, <laughs> and you could be Rhode Island. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. Oh, this guy's back again. Oh, this fucking... I'm not afraid to get sand on my tuxedo if you're not afraid to let the wind mess your hair up a little bit when I take the top down. What? Like, under what circumstance? Who is he looking for? Like, <laughs> there was a what? lot happened there in that sentence. A lot <laughs> happened there in the sentence. They're on the beach, but they're also in a convertible and it's windy <laughs> and, he's a and he's on his knees <laughs> on the beach. He's got a tuxedo on anyway. On oh, the beach. and he's got a tuxedo. See, he's <laughs> Who wears dr- a tuxedo to the beach? He's, do you know what he's doing? Do you know what he's actually doing? He's a fucking clever bastard, right? Here's what he's doing. He's trying to tell them, A, I own a tuxedo. So, <laughs> which means B, I go to the places where tuxedos are, 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 are common, which yeah. means I'll take you to a country club or something. Mm. And C, uh, C, I, I live by the coast. D, I own a convertible. Yeah. Actually, he was very clever there. Very clever. There was a lot happening, but he was very clever. It was confusing, but now that... Confusing, (laughs) but he's subliminally dropping these messages in. Do you know remember the old movies? It was like, where are you going? Coca-Cola. Do you know those... (laughs) (laughs) That's what he's doing. So he is... We know so that he is wild and he also has... Oh, oh, this is wild, is is it? wild. (laughs) I have a station wagon. (laughs) Cool whip. (laughs) Yeah, oh, this guy is... Uh... Even a, a nice bath. Whoa, that eyebrow <laughs> flick was very disconcerting. I'm going right back to the start of that one. Perhaps even a, whoa, a nice whoa. bath with some champagne and candles. They're going straight for the like. They're like they're really not saying like, hey, would you like to go to dinner? Maybe yeah. go see a movie. I'm interested in loads of different things. I like activities. I like to go water skiing. I like to go, you know what I mean? And these guys are just straight into like... It's zero to creepy. Very, like, really creepy. Like, mm-hmm. they're kind of like, I'll rub your feet while you read my yearbook. Like, it's just, it's like you're going, for how specific are you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, if, if you if you like drinking dilutable orange, leave now. Like, it's like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> if you don't mind sitting on my veranda with no clothes on, then I, <laughs> then I will be opening my double door fridge to take out some pastrami that I grew in my own vineyard. Like, it's <laughs> so funny. Random. Oh my god. What do you think the success rate for these things were? Like, think about this now. The women were also from the eighties. Yeah. So they were like perms and fucking hairy armpits. Well, I mean it depends. Like were were they looking for wild men in convertibles, you know, that didn't smoke and you know? I'd love to know if any of these people met 
and married and had kids with. I said there has to be some success rate. They actually a couple of them. I think it was um, Big Big John or Big. Ooh, Bro- his friends <laughs> called him Big jo- Big. <laughs> he a couple of them actually appeared on the Ellen Show about ten years ago. Okay. They found them and they're all married, not on the basis of these dating profiles, but three at least three from this video are married. Wow. Yeah. But not so there was someone who didn't mind getting her hair tossed while he put the top down with a sandy knees. <laughs> In his tuxedo. In his tuxedo. In his tuxedo, of course. I mean, until they said tuxedo, he was ineligible. <laughs> so they've had they've had success, just not with these dating videos. Oh, I love them. They're so good. I mean, they're so eighties. So eighties. Like they're but like they had to go into a building, they had to fill out a form. They had to say, that's what I'm looking for. And then they had to sit down and then they, someone had to coach them to a degree and say like, you know, talk about yourself, you know, in a non-sexual predatory way. And then they sat down and went, I know exactly what you're looking for. I'd like to ba- bathe you with candles and champagne. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Can, no, no pull, yeah. pull it back a little bit. These are the better bits. Can you imagine what didn't make the cut to these videos? Hell. Wow, oh, that's great. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, there's more. Oh wow Oh wow This is my favourite one This is my favourite one This Okay Straight away This guy is The best looking Yeah he's handsome He's the best looking um, He's got the hair going on Yeah He's got the white teeth He's got the rose So he's 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 put a bit of work into this yeah. And he's putting his best foot forward So far He <laughs> That's worrying Already <laughs> So far He hasn't Does he have trousers on? <laughs> So far, he hasn't done anything wrong, and I'm I'm actually not going to be cynical. I'm actually holding out hope for this guy. Yeah, I am rooting for this guy. Don't even know what his name is yet, but I'm rooting for him a hundred percent. Thought I told you never to call me here. Oh, he's a fucking <laughs> mentor. <laughs> what was that? I think that was him being smooth. Oh, was that a joke? <laughs> What was it? Even the rose was like, I'm actually, I meant to be a white rose, but I'm actually scarlet for you. <laughs> I'm mortified. The you rose abs- doesn't want to be there. You had everything going for you. The rose, like, you had everything going for you. I guarantee you someone's going to look back at this in 35 years' time. <laughs> and even though they were rooting for you at first glance, they're going to be completely let down by you. You absolute fucking shambles of a human being. <laughs> fucking hell. I mean, what woman wouldn't, wouldn't fall for that, though? Do you know? So what? Like, he pretended a rose was a telephone. I mean, <laughs> oh, is that what it was? Oh, I thought he just thought he was talking to the actual rose. Well, in that case, fucking sign me up for a date with him. This guy is, um, because he's got a reindeer jumper on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he's, look, Christmas he's... is a very lonely time of year. Mm. Um, I once dumped a girl on Christmas Eve. Ross Brown, you did not. I didn't dump. That is the worst thing you could do. Let me just explain. No, there's no L- explanation. Let me explain. We weren't going out with each other. So how did you dump her? Okay, I never went out with anyone before uh, my wife. You never had a girlfriend? I never had a girlfriend. Okay. It was three months. From but hello. how did you dump somebody you weren't going out with then? I, like, I was, you know, you I was. Seen. I was you, know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I was, yay. And uh, yeah, so every relationship I ever had, if you could call it that, was like, it was always three months from hello to fuck off. It sounds like a really bad Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this year, <laughs> Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey have three months from hello to fuck off <laughs> in cinemas this June. Uh, yeah, so I, I, what, what would happen was I would be like, oh my God, she's amazing, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, she's amazing. Chasey, chasey, chase, chase. Chasey, chasey, chase, chase. Yeah. So I understand these guys, right? Yeah. Love the chase, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I've got a tuxedo on it. <laughs> Let me put your top down. <laughs> right? And then... <laughs> And then I'd get them, right? And then, I, and then, and then I, you know, I'd, I'd, um, you got I'd win them over. No, I'd win them over. Okay. And then I win them over. And I'm like, oh my god, yes! Da, 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 da. I used to sing Sonic the Hedgehog whenever I got a girl. <laughs> How they stuck with you for three months, I don't know. And, but anyway. and then from the time that they're like, yeah, I, I like you too, whatever, to the time that I, what would happen in that interim time is you got the ick. I would go, oh, oh, her left eyebrow is a little bit higher than the other one. Three holes. I, I would I would focus on one thing, and then that's all I would see by the end of the three months. You got the ick. 
That's What's the ick? The ick is when somebody does something or they don't even have to do something. I was that, only looking for an excuse. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with her eyebrow. It, it'll immediately give you reason to get out of it. So like that, somebody's eyebrow or... I mean, she had oh a moustache, but it was the eyebrow. It was like... <laughs> Do you know, like full so Tom Selleck, he could, he like, he could be a really noisy eater, and he could be absolutely dropped out gorgeous, yeah. and everything else is perfect. But you'll focus on the noisy eating, and you'll go, "No, I gotta get out of here, gotta get out." But you're looking for an excuse to get out. Yeah, That's I, what you it, did. it wasn't the thing that was starting to annoy me. It was I was look, try, I was looking for something to give me the excuse to call it off okay. because I would get serious panic attacks going. Oh, this is it. No, I'm gonna fucking get her pregnant, and I'm gonna end up married. I'm gonna be fucking miserable. And then that would, and then that would drive me mad. Yeah. Okay. I want this guy now. I don't want this guy. <laughs> are you sure? I want to. I want to hear what this guy has to say. Things I love are photography, travel, skiing, and cuddling. <laughs> That's a combination of things there. Yeah. Why cuddling? Is it like? I think he wanted to show different sides of his personality. You know that he's into. What like, do you mean different? I'm a teddy bear. He's into extreme sports. Skiing. He was. He had me the whole time. By yeah. the way, his face did not say any of those things, <laughs> like any of those things. You know, he's reading like cards and behind I, yeah. the camera, like totally. Yeah. I like skiing, skiing, skiing. No, it's two eyes. <laughs> this guy, those sunglasses <laughs> are the most unnerving sunglasses I've ever seen. I kind of like this guy though because it's got a tint, but it's also got like a fade out tint. Like you can see his cheeks perfectly And then he's like But no they're going sunglasses <laughs> why, why you like this guy? There's just something about him I kind of like There's something not about him wise, But I kind of get a nice I get a nice energy off him You know, Like a life sentence <laughs> Energy <laughs> Very strong sense of humour I read recently that everyone thinks they've got one But my friends do agree that I do Might not <laughs> I mean what a fucking laugh a minute that guy is Huh? Fucking hell Well if his friend said so uh, the mustache, it's mustache city, isn't it? Everyone, and it, they've got really bad hairlines. Everyone's going bald in the eighties. <laughs> Everybody, are, and they're like twenty-two, and they're all going bald. I think it's all the perms that were going on back then. Yeah, they're well. Do you know what? They're, you know what it is? They're accentuating their receding hairlines by having their hair out. Yeah. See, he now, in this day and age, would have his head skinhead, and you wouldn't even notice. I probably. bet you they look way better now. Than you they think did so? In those, in those, yeah. Yeah, well, they have to look better than this. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Even if they died in 1992, they'd probably still look better than this. <laughs> Not appear it, but um, semi-crazy. Uh, kind of Whoa! <laughs> oh! We have a winner! What the fuck? So he decided, I'm going to find myself a lady. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dress up like a fucking fucking <laughs> My God, this, he must be one of the first ever cosplayers. Oh yeah, actually, Cosplays, he'd probably yeah. be a hit with the ladies now. Yeah. He was in the right, born in the wrong fucking generation. But this came out of his own head, you see. This wasn't based on a TV show or anything, this costume. This is just something he wanted oh, to just, wear. Oh, he's just like... This isn't him being kind of whimsical, you know? Oh, he's not like Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. He's just like... <laughs> just out there as a Viking, living his best Skin life. Skin four dogs, <laughs> had to find something to make out of them. Oh. If you're a typical research mathematician, I guess. Currently. Typical. I mean, Jesus, there are a dime a fucking dozen, isn't it? Like, if you've met one research mathematician, you've met them all. And they all dress like Vikings. The all of them. of them. They're fucking mad for they're... the pillaging. And they're <laughs> fucking. The amount of mead they go through on a weekend is is not even worth mentioning. Don't mad for the stuff. Braiding Don't. each other's hair on, a, on an arc <laughs> or some kind of long boat. And sometimes I just got to get away from them. And I'm like, I'm going up to the round tower, lads. Oh, I gosh. pull up the ladder. I can't, I can't stand like, these lads. All these mathematicians, they're all the same. Just throw down the yard to tell us to them. That's all they want. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I could watch them all day long. I love them so much. All day long. But I don't think the dating scene is after getting any better. Ah, come no, on. I come really, on. I really don't think it is. Well, no, well, no. You, if, if you wanted to meet someone back then, you would have had to drive down to that building, talk to the receptionist, sit down in a, in a room and they would put in a VCR and you would have to go through all of them and say, number seven, Steve, Viking, fucking, I cancelled my membership, please. <laughs> Whereas you can sit at home on your couch with your friends chatting away and going, 
Swipe right. Swipe right. I, swipe I left, see. Left, I don't left, think left, you've, you've, right, you've clearly Are you single? Not, are you in a relationship? I'm single, okay. and I don't think you've been on Tinder recently. <laughs> then, because every single Irish man on Tinder is a full time mad bastard. Oh really? That's it. That's is that the it? thing? Every do single they think this is <laughs> impressive? Oh no, they're yeah. not. Are they? Yeah, yeah. Full, oh, I'm a lunatic. I'm yeah. cool. There's several photos as well that that are that that you'll see in every lads. Tinder profiles yeah. you have uh, them on their on their their journeys around the world to show that they're you know yeah, well yeah, travelled well traveled, yeah, yeah cultured they're, they're always with a tiger for some reason they're always, always like <laughs> always, always Thailand yeah. always with a tiger they're always playing a guitar in like a house party scenario oh. type of thing so I'm a ch- people sound like a jury. you know you know they're playing Wonderwall that yeah, type yeah, of yeah, thing yeah. they're always wearing a GAA jersey as well okay and I, then, I am not down for do any know, of these guys do you know what I have seen so much of and I can't believe that's like uh, any man would go. Yeah, that's 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 grand. Parkour. Like, <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> oh my god, I would go for that in a heartbeat. Um, so many lads just literally pull down, pull down their jeans to their ankles, so you can still see the jeans around the ankles, and just take a photo, topless, just with their jocks on and their jeans around their ankles. I have seen that. Are you having every a five laugh. profiles? Go this on. is how ridiculous men are. This is got it. Irish Tinder is essentially photos like crotch photos, like crotch really, photos. Yeah, really close up crotch photos, like like. Underpants. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Underpants. <laughs> could you have picked a more unattractive I love, name I love, for that? Underpants. I love the word underpants. Men react to underpants the way that women react to panties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's underpants. If you you what what you do there is you completely reduce us to juveniles. But you say underpants. It's like make sure now you've got your underpants. But there is you can never say the word underpants and be angry at the same time. You can't. In what situation? Like, you, like as soon as you. I'm already here. I'm not taking this shit from no one. Pass me my underpants. You, you see. <laughs> what you, you can. There are certain words that you can't say angry. Like you just, you just, you just can't get away with it. Cro- underpants. Oh, qu- croissant. Yeah. Well, you can't. <laughs> and even though it's actually spelled cross, you can't. <laughs> yeah. Take away your croissant. It is. It's like. It's like. That's the last time I ever <laughs> trust you with a cross. Cross. <laughs> You can't, because you, everyone gets a little bit posh when they say they always say we're by croissant. I'll tell you another story now. This is um, I, I didn't mean to tell this story, but this happened to me on Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's about eight years ago. I lived up the country, and I was living with a girl and groups of friends, kind of friends of friends. One of one of her friends of friends added me on Facebook, okay. and I'd say if I spoke to this guy, I'd say four times. Mm-hmm. And have not spoken to him since. Okay. So it's about eight or nine years later. Well, oh, guys do this. I know guys <laughs> do this. They do the whole kind of like creeping through the history kind of thing. Sunday morning, I got a message at quarter to 11 on Facebook. Quarter to 11 in the morning? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll be honest. I think you're gorgeous and would love to fuck you. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. That was his opening gambit. That's it. Eight years Who later. Who taught him how to date all of these fuckers? Eight years later. Eight years yeah. later. Yeah. So I kind of thought that's that's not for me. He's after getting the wrong person. He's got the wrong. That's person. so out of the blue. That out means blue. that means I've been stalking your profile. That's number one. Yeah. I've been I I've been looking at you very recently, <laughs> yeah. and I've decided. <laughs> eight years later, you're still what I thought you were. I barely spoke to him eight years ago. I'd say a handful of times I spoke to him and it was just kind of a, oh, hey, how are you? Kind of a thing. That's the Never most in, desperate. Yeah. 10 past 11, probably shouldn't have said that, he says to me. I'm still not responding to him because I'm thinking, I don't think he knows who he's talking to. I thought he's got the wrong person. Quarter past 11, are you mad with me? Are you mad with me? He's having his own argument. You're not. An hour later. Fuck you anyway, you frigid <laughs> bitch. <Is> that... <laughs> An hour later, I got a message saying, I always thought you were a bit, I, I always thought you were hot. A bit forward, I know, but I always thought you had such a hot figure and would love to fuck you. Figure. <laughs> oh, so he's gone, he's gone back in again. So he's gone, he's gone, think you're really hot and love to fuck you. And then he said, probably shouldn't have said that. And he said, are you odd? Are you upset? Are you angry? And then you didn't reply back. And then he just went, do you know, do you know what I think now will really suck? I think I can sit, guys, I know I've sent these three messages now, but I think I could save this. This is what I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to change. I'm going to I'm going to add the word figure. But I'm I'm going to essentially send her the same message, but I'm going to put the word figure in there. 
And then she'll know that I know that the, that the E is silent at the end of it. See, I wonder, does this work for lads? This, no, uh, this never, ever happens to me. I never get stuff like this. So does this work for lads? Like, has no. he done this before where he's Unless like, you're messaging hot messes that are just like, yeah, <laughs> ah, yeah. Like, no, like, who? Like, okay, if it does work, what calibre of person are you, you know what I mean? I know. It, it'll have to be the female version of that guy. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But like that scares me that like he's going yeah, yeah eight years ago that's probably enough You must time. have made some fucking impression on him. <laughs> With my hi how are you? <laughs> Let me tell you about one of my favourite places in the world. Uh, I've played all over the place and one of my favourite venues is Sea Church in Ballycotton. Sea Church is East Cork's newest restaurant and live music venue. It's a modern, beautiful building integrated perfectly with one of the most iconic live venues in all of Ireland in the beautiful church itself playing host to some of the best music artists. My throat. <laughs> my throat is doing the little gurgle thing that we were talking about on another episode. Uh, uh. It's also really good for Christmas parties. <laughs> This just lengthens their this just lengthens their read or their ad, doesn't it? They it's get just, they get more bang for their buck get, ringing, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> uh, Christmas parties with mulled wine receptions overlooking the ocean, uh, and and all types of parties. By the way, they do like you can have a birthday there, you can have a wedding anniversary, you can have a a staff do, you could have um, ooh, uh, like a, a wedding, full full blown wedding, yeah, the whole shebang, christening, the whole shebang. They do everything, and it's it's a, such a multifaceted venue that any kind of uh, any kind of reception is totally uh, is totally suitable for it. Uh, live entertainment, DJs, all that kind of jazz as well. They've got some fantastic musicians playing down there. Fabulous seafood, burgers, wings, pizzas galore. Uh, washed down with Ireland's constant. <laughs> washed down with Ireland's greatest musicians, comedians, and playwrights. That's just me as well. There's other artists that play there as well. Oh, oh hey! wow! <laughs> it's the home of the Valley Cotton Fo- Comedy Festival as well. It's base camp for the Valley Cotton Comedy Festival, and we might be sneaking an old, as I said, an old, maybe an old podcast festival down there. Maybe an old writing you, festival. You never know. Can you get us in next year? Into the podcast festival that you were involved in. Anyone wants to have us down there? Uh, find them on social media at Sea Church Bally Cotton. And for more information and for bookings, visit seachurch.ie. That's seachurch.ie. Go to go to go west. It's not west Cork. I don't even know directions. I live in East Cork, and I still the fuck is that where? Where? Go to wetland in East Cork. Wetland. Well, it's the ocean is there, like so. It's wetland, like and visit. Sea Church is the church by the sea. Sea You are making an absolute hames out of this. (laughs) That's (laughs) seachurch.ie. Worth the money. Do you know what? Jesus maybe, Christ. maybe, maybe the love of my life uh, will come along if I if I manifest it. Um, we yeah. have another video for you now. Okay. You've probably seen this video as well, actually, because it's pretty famous. But it's all over TikTok again. This is a video of Oprah speaking to Jim Carrey about before he became famous. This is the check he wrote himself. Yes. Oh, okay. I love this. I, by the way, massive Jim Carrey fan. Massive Jim Carrey fan. When I was a kid. I wanted to be Jim Carrey. Did you? And I didn't realize that that meant I want to be a comedian. But I just didn't. I just didn't know. But I just I knew every line from every movie Aww. with every mannerism, with every little affliction, every single thing. I had off book of every movie he did. I was obsessed, and still am obsessed with Jim Carrey. I think Aww. he's absolutely outstanding. So here we go. I'm, I'm happy to see this again because I like Jim Carrey. Obviously, you knew somewhere inside yourself that you were destined to be famous because I think it's a really a marvelous thing, that visualization thing you did. Do mm-hmm. you all read about this or hear this? That you used to go up on Mulholland Drive and park... Yeah, every night. ...and visualize seeing yourself as... Yeah, I would visualize... Uh, yeah, I would this visualize... This is when you were broke and poor. You know, right, having mm-hmm. directors interested in me and people that I respected uh, um, saying, you know, I like your work. He's essentially done the secret before the secret. Yeah. Hasn't he? Yeah. It's the, it's the put something out in the universe and the universe will respond. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's super intelligent. He's super intelligent and he also, he almost seems like a bit of a, like, you know, the whole thing he did about the, we, we're not even here, we don't even exist. Yeah. We're just fragrances in the air and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And he was, he was doing it slightly in jest, but at the same time, you can tell that he is super, super aware of consciousness and the whole illusion of life and the fact that we're just like we're just electrical signals that are being fl- flying around the place but we think we're like these special little things and he just completely gets it I think he's I think he's it's almost like he's observing the world from the outside in yeah and that's why he's able to be so um 
varied and Bill Murray's the exact same. Bill Murray always acted like he was he was aware that it was a movie. There's this kind of nonchalance about Bill Murray. I love Bill it's, Murray. It's almost it's almost as if in every movie he it's almost like the character knows that it's being filmed it's a movie. So there's always this kind of like and he does it in a very kind of like ah I was just kind of almost phoning it in. Like. Yeah, I just turned up, I guess. Yeah, it's, and, it's, and it's so good, but it's again, it's that kind of, it's that outside perspective looking into the bubble. You don't get that because everyone tries to be in the bubble. It's always this pretend to be in that world and yeah. they have this kind of thing of like, no, no, I'm aware that there's a bubble yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm dipping inside, but I'm really looking at it from the outside. Or whatever that is. And, and uh, I would visualise things coming to me that I w- wanted or whatever. This and, was in uh, like 1987, 85. Yeah, yeah. So didn't you write yourself a check? I heard yeah. that you did. Is that true? I wrote myself a check. $10 million for services rendered for acting, I think is what he actually wrote. Check out. for $10 million for acting services rendered. And I gave myself uh, five years or three years maybe. And, uh, and uh, I dated it Thanksgiving 1995. And I put it in my wallet and I kept it there and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff. And, uh, and, uh, but then just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was going to make $10 million on, I think it was Dumb and Dumber. Maybe. Dumb and Dumber, yeah. yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? He had such, a, I mean, his, his, his initial year was The Mask. Yeah. Uh, Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. In one year. That was all in one year. Three fingers. Three (laughs) three movies. Those three movies in one year. It was probably 18 months or something like that. That's incredible. That was unbelievable. But like you say, it's totally the secret. Yeah, it is. It's completely the secret. Do you believe in the whole manifestation and visualisation? Because this is, it's another one of these trends that's that's after taking off. Um, If you look at Google searches for last year alone, it's after jumping, skyrocketing. 600% the levels of searches for manifestation. Really? And affirmation and visualisation. Do you buy into this? No. Not at all? No, but I will tell you this though. I find that when I tell somebody I'm doing something before I've done it, I always achieve it. Give so, me an example. Um, I, I told somebody I was doing the Opera House before I ever booked the Opera House. Wow. I told somebody I was writing a movie before I even prepend, before I even started typing it. I told somebody I was, I do, I do it with everything. Mm. I do it with absolutely everything where I feel like that if I say it, I have to do it then. Yeah. So it's not actually manifest. It's not actually manifesting. It's forcing myself into a position where I go. Well, I can't. It's a lie if I ha- if I don't do it now. Yeah. So I almost force myself into a lie that I have to then prove to be right. It's kind of a. It's it's your way of setting a goal for yourself because you've said it out loud to somebody have that to you to have someone. to commit to yeah. it now. Yeah. 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 But if you look at the the amount of celebrities that that I mean, buy so, into I mean, this. other people have done this probably. Yeah. There's probably a guy up Mayo that was like, I'm going to tell Lorraine that she's got a lovely figure. <laughs> And you've you've turned that man into a liar. <laughs> you've you've burned his dreams. Like him or love him though, Conor McGregor is a huge believer. He does believe in all that. In visualization and manifestation. Yeah. And I have to admire it. We well, manifested the fa- phone out of his hand onto the floor, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> he's always talking about, you know, back in the day before before he became a well known name mm-hmm. and stuff, he was he didn't even have his own car. He was driving his girlfriend. Yeah beat up Ponto or whatever it was yeah. down O'Connell Street and visualising he was in a Lamborghini. Yeah. Look at him now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's... I like the way he's... Uh, I've noticed the way that he's talked... He's he's changed his cadence of speech now. Has he? Yeah, before he used to be always like, 50 Gs, baby, yeah, Dana, 50 Gs, was on the dollar. And now he's like, oh, I am very humbled to be here in your fantastic uh, uh, event centre. It is great to be an ambassador for this sport and for Ireland. And I wish the Chicago Bears the best in the season because no one can understand me otherwise. It does sound like he's been given a script to learn off, actually, yeah. doesn't it? And yeah. he's just like reciting it like he's in school yeah. type of a thing. Yeah. But he is a big believer in it. And when you see the numbers of searches for this stuff online, like affirmations... I don't know. This is something I can't... This is when you tell yourself shit. Yeah, I can't buy into this. Affirmations are when 
you repeat a phrase over and over. So there's loads of affirmations. There's millions of views of these affirmations on TikTok and yeah. millions of people swearing by them. So like that, if you said, oh, I want to do a gig in wherever, the three arena or yeah. something, and that's in your that's your goal. Apparently what you're meant to do is repeat these affirmations like, I will be the best person that I can be. If you repeat this. I am powerful and strong. Yeah. I can achieve what I want. Over and over and over, every day, multiple times a day that you will achieve that goal of yours to do the three Maybe arena. I do believe in it. Maybe I do believe in it then. So do you, do you use affirmations? I keep telling myself I'm going to sell out Parky Cueve. Really? Yeah. Okay. And every time I'm in... Okay, so this happened in the Everyman. Yeah. This happened in the Opera House. This has happened every step where I've always been in places where I shouldn't be yet. And I've always sat there and went, I'm going to sell this place out. I'm going to sell this place. Out. I'm going to do two nights in this place. I'm going to sell out two nights in this place. So I've always done, and every time I go, when I get, went to get my COVID vaccines in Parky Creeve, I was like, I'm going to sell this place out. I'm going to sell it and I'm going to have a stage right in the middle of this so place. So when you were saying that, are you visualising yourself on stage? No, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what you need to do. When you are uh, manifesting and when you're visualising, like, so if you're like, oh, I want to, I want to be a millionaire. That's not enough. You mm-hmm. have to visualise the thing that you're going to do with the money. So whether it's going to buy a house, you need to visualise the key in your hand unlocking the door. You need to be really specific. But I don't think by doing that that I'm... I, I don't think the universe is giving it to me. That's no. horse shit. No. I, I think it's a way I'm of setting an intention. I'm visualising it so that I will work to achieve it. Yeah. There's no one's given me any of that shit. Yeah. There's no cosmic fucking gift being sent down there like, <laughs> paching! Well done, you drew a picture in your head. Now that's horse shit. That is absolute... Horse shit. And by the way, there's a lot of people that are Googling that stuff. And there's a lot of people that have gone down the route of like fucking, oh, um, um, our, our um, energies are aligned with the um, alchemy power from the um, Mother Earth. And of course, the, um, the eternal destination of all of our energies and chakras are aligning in multiple moons inside ourselves and both uh, interstellarly. And you're going, what the fuck are you on about? This started with just do a bit of meditation, yeah. do a bit of breathing and a bit of journaling. Remember people were going, I, I think I'm going to write some things in a journal. I'm going to do a bit of journaling. That was big during the first yeah. lockdown. Bit of journaling, big. bit of meditation. It's a fuck. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You look at some of those people now, they're beyond fucking saving. It's a slippery slope between doing a bit of journaling <laughs> and naked in the woods shitting and, sh- and howling at your own shit. It's a slippery slope. Shit, you saw that, did you? It's a, <laughs> it's a slippery slope. It's like, what the fuck? I think we need people to People are up. having these shame and shame and fucking ceremonies and they're all kind of going oh, and they're holding cups against each other's wombs and they're like oh. well look let's try it let's, let's what a load of fucking bollocks and you... who pays money for that shit let's see if we can create an unforeseen affirmation right now so you come up with an affirmation and if you're listening to this say this affirmation mm-hmm. two three times a day and also be thinking of what, what your goal is and let's okay. see let's so see I'm does try- it work I'm okay? trying to get inside the listener's head now okay, okay? Yeah. I'm trying to get inside the listener's head and you have to do this if you're listening Yeah. you can't just you can't just passively listen to this this is your. This is the interaction but I'm asking you to do so that we can actually try and create some kind of energy this, this here this could change your life okay you ready so you're sitting down you're, someone's on a bus think about this someone's on a bus listening to this yep. someone's on an airplane someone's sitting in their office with their headphones in someone's maybe working in a factory somebody's minding their kids and, and they've got the headphones in or whatever so this is what I want you to say I've killed three people and I don't know how to stop I don't even know if I want to I've killed three people and I don't know how to stop. Don't even know if I want to. I always kill when somebody hears me. I always kill when somebody hears me. I'm so sorry if you're listening to this on speakers. (laughs) Say it. Say it. Fucking say it. Make your life more interesting and just (laughs) say it. Your work day will be way more interesting. You'll have loads of room on that fucking bus or airplane. I guarantee <laughs> you, sure. you'll have the whole fucking road to yourself. You'll have the guards after you as well. But look at you'll get your goals. Can I tell you an interesting thing that, yeah. that you reminded me of? Uh, I was watching the Turning Point 9-11 thing on Netflix. I watched, I watched three quarters of an episode. And then everyone else in the room got bored because it went back to like 1987. Mm-hmm. When they were, you know, the, 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 you know, the Americans... 
arming the Afghans and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and and they got bored. They were like, oh, we just wanted to know about the day. And I was like, oh, you're right fucking, you're right fucking happy bunch, aren't you? Just show us the death. I was like, Jesus Christ. History lesson, like, they, they weren't interested. So I turned it off. So I didn't get to see the full episode, but I'm going to watch it. But I remember when 9-11 happened. Mm. And I remember not long after 9-11, maybe it was a, two years, three years after, uh, I read an article about random number generators. So there's before you could just go online and, and get a random number generator on a website. There was machines. There are machines for scientific study. And all oh, these machines are they're all over the world and they're in different research centres. And what they do is they just randomly generate numbers. For what? They just ju- ju- they just randomly generate numbers. Right? It's it's to it's to I don't know what the reason for it is, but it's to kind of it's that sounds like a waste of time. Pick up trends. <laughs> Loads of scientific things are a waste of time. Have you heard half of the studies? And it's like uh, a college in Cambridge has said that uh, you know people have shorter head uh, headphones. <laughs> what? What? Do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, uh, pigtails are meant to make 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 you more less likely a vegetarian. Oh, fuck, off. <laughs> fuck off! Fuck off! You're not going to break. You're like, why be a scientist if you're going to do that shit? Yeah. Like, if you're not going to send people to the moon or cure cancer or whatever, why are you saying that bear claws are longer than what they were in the 1700s? <laughs> Who gives a fuck, right? But these random number generators, however pointless they might be, discovered something. And what they discovered was when 9/11 happened. All of the number, random number generators around the world started repeating or it's correlating the same numbers. One in Japan, one in London, one in, in Belgium, one in Canada. They started, uh, all of the numbers started to kind of sync up. So the numbers started to become more and more, almost the same, getting closer and closer. And the same numbers were starting to come up. And it was because they think that the entire world was collectively conscious of one particular thing. And that the energy of the focus of everyone in the world thinking of one event made the random... So whatever energy was out there, these random wor- number generators were were generating similar numbers. Wow. It's like the Yuri Geller thing, you know? It's the bend the spoon thing. It's I know that's all trickery and all that mm. kind of stuff. But there is something about collective consciousness. Yeah. There has to be some power I, of yeah. collective consciousness. I'm a definite believer in in energies. I, I, I can feel energies off people. I can, I'm, I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. The affirmation stuff... Not so much. And sometimes I see traffic wardens and I'm like, fall. <laughs> fall. And I'm like, if there was 7,000 of us, I guarantee you we'd do it. <laughs> fall. And sometimes I'm just staring so hard. I'm That's like, what you do when you sell out Parky Creep, right? We'll try and make <laughs> one traffic warden fall over. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. <laughs> um, have you ever quit a job dramatically? I, uh, I qu- quit a job creatively. How, how does that work? I thought, you know what, I thought... I'll I, write them a poem. I thought everyone in this building, you know, I'm quite fond of them and they're quite fond of me. And I was like, I don't want me to leave. And then them to kind of go, oh, remember Ross? I was like, I hate to be one of those people. Do you know when people leave jobs and everyone goes, oh, do you remember <laughs> Brian? What? Was it Brian? What was his name again? Didn't he have like shoulders and a head? <laughs> Brian, wasn't it? I don't know. I, I, I never wanted to be that person because I find that that's like being a ghost when you're still alive. God, you take this very... Seriously, think about it though. You? No, think about it. when you're dead, right? You're a ghost, and then people forget about you, and you're gone from their consciousness. So to them, you've died. You're yeah. no longer a character in their life. You're no longer a supporting character in their life. Yeah, but you're you're, you're still hanging around somewhere. Yeah, somewhere else, but outside <laughs> of their world. So you're dead to them. Yeah. So I, I I get anxiety about even being forgotten by people or like. So I I, I for this. And I didn't realise what I was doing at the time, but I do know that's what I was doing. Now. I was trying to have my legacy live on in in leisureplex. <laughs> I don't know if you know that people have legacies <laughs> in places like Leisureplex. My leisure, my Leisureplex legacy is probably still going to this day. I do know that up to 14 months ago, I was reminded that my legacy still exists. Go on, tell us. What did you do? I got loads of photographs of myself printed up and I cut out my face out of all of them. Like copies of the exact same photograph. And it was before you could get like, you could just do it yourself. So I had to get like, like, like 300 photographs printed up. Oh it cost God. me like 60 quid. So I got all these photographs printed up. Same photograph. And it was just me like this with my thumbs up. <laughs> my thumb up. And I stuck them all over the building. Everywhere. Loads of different places. So when someone in four years time is cleaning out all of the bowling shoes or whatever, they get to like one of the like most unused bowling shoes and then they turn it over to look at the sole. And, and they go, is that Brian? <laughs> <I> mean, uh, <laughs> 
the last time I got a phone call, somebody was down in the back of the mechanics behind the bowling machines and they were repairing one of the machines and they were lying under a bar and I was like, All right. Ross is looking up again. <laughs> you actually paid money to leave your job. You know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to RT to be a big turkey. So I was delighted. So I was like, it doesn't matter. Money's no object now. I've made it. Ding. Yeah, I was in a giant dusting suit there- for a year. There is nothing worse than being in a job that you don't like. So it makes it... I posed naked for a art class. What? In did Spain. you? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I posed naked for an art class in Spain. How did you leave that job? Huh? How did you leave that job? <laughs> Sideways. <laughs> I've always had shit jobs. I've always put myself in a position where I never had a great job. Because I always thought that then I'd get comfortable and I wouldn't do what I really wanted to do. So I've always, I always made myself have the worst jobs. Mm. So I was like, I have to get out of this place. So I've always, I've never, I've never went once went, this will be good for me. Well, maybe you could have left your job like these guys here. This is a, a series of videos of people leaving their jobs in the most glorious of fashions. All right. Okay. I'm here to tell you that I'm quitting. <laughs> You can tell he hates his boss <laughs> so much, and his boss is like, just fucking leave. <laughs> hey, for the hazard for today, we got these motherfucking nuts. Fuck you, fuck you, you're cool. Fuck you, you're cool. There's my fucking bag. Here's a good can of go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Is he shotgun in the beer? Yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. Because there's fuck that awkward you, moment. Fuck you, fuck you. And what rubs it in even more is, you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. as in, I'm not just being resentful. You're cool. But the rest of you are a bunch of pricks. Boom. Boom. These motherfucking nuts. <laughs> that's it. You out of here, Curtis? Gee. And then one guy doesn't get it. Are you out of here, Fergus? It's like, are you, have you not been paying attention at all? I'm now one beer deep. And I've told everyone, fuck you. And you're still going, what, are you going at, are you going at lunch, is it? <laughs> it's like, that guy's definitely going to get fired after the other guy quits. He's like, what, what's going on? <laughs> Fergus after getting the promotion, is he? <laughs> fuck Paul, man. You fuck you cut. You fuck you cut. Oh, yes. This one is so horrible. I've been like that in Aldi as not an employer. Oh. As not an employee. I had, this is what I had to do last week. Every trolley was broken. There was something wrong with every trolley. Because you brought the two euro and it's actually a euro. That the euro, the two euro wouldn't go in. There was a, like one of the walls of the trolley was broken on another one. The handle was broken on another one. The coin thing was hanging off on another one. There was, someone decided to fucking deconstruct a cabbage in the next one. There was fucking... <laughs> Everyone, there was something wrong. I had to take, I had to go like 11 trolleys down, unhook that one, drag them all out, move them into the next <laughs> bay of trolleys, collect them. In. I, was like, well, I'm, I was like, I'm now working for fucking Aldi. I'm trying to get shopping. I haven't even gone to the shop yet. And I'm now doing their trolley job for them. And I eventually got a trolley. And it was like, all over the place. And then you get to the till. and I get so stressed Oh my God, that gives me such anxiety at the till. Do you race them? Do you race them? Oh yeah. Because I race them. Oh yeah, I have to have like a plan of action when I get up there. I have a full... So here's what I do, right? I I, I really try and... and I don't know do they care or not, (laughs) but in my head, I'm like, it's like, it's literally, it's me versus them. And I'm like, it's like, it's literally like a standoff in a fucking Western. It's like... <laughs> and I can see them. I'm going. You're not going to fucking. And what I, what I think they want to do is just make up a stack of things. Yeah. To the point where they go, oh, I actually can't put any more. Yeah. Because like, they give you a dirty you. look. Then there's a bit they of a, a sigh, kind of a. Oh, can you but he, here's what I do. I'm so good, right? What I do is I line, line, line the trolley up, and then I hang all the bags off the kind of you know the seat thing that flips forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There. Boom. I hang them off the little hook thing on that, right? And then as they put everything up, I literally do this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with my coffee cup. I literally do this. I slide it off, catch it, and drop it into the trolley. Oh. So I cushion, I cushion the fall of the thing. I go to that. That's a, that's a risky move now with eggs. Not eggs, not eggs, and not jars, unless there's crisps or something underneath them to okay. cushion them, right? <laughs> but now what I started to do is I started to put the bags over the hook, and then I take one of the loops of the bags off, so the bag is open, and then I start trying to fill the bag. Oh, that's clever. They don't like that. <laughs> They do not like that because you're already you're, you're because feeling they the like you're holding people up and I'm yeah. like actually I'm waiting for you to scan the cereal, motherfucker. <laughs> 
So maybe if you stop assessing my fucking oh, trolley packing. The pressure is unbelievable though. It is unreal. It's, oh, I get like, I get really nervous and really tense when I'm up there. Do you ever do the awkward hand touch? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh, when they're like just scan, like They're after pushing scanning it and to push, you and, and then you, you reach too soon and then you have this kind of moment. Yeah. And like you, like it's, it's such a moment that like, it's like time slows down and it's there. It's, it's almost like they're, they look at you and they're like, if you don't mind getting sand on your tuxedo, I don't mind getting my hair messed up when you put the top down. And then you pull away and it's like, whoa, what the fuck just happened And there? do you ever notice you do the weird, you don't go, you don't fully commit to the word sorry. You kind of go, sorry. Sand, sand, sand. <laughs> like, why are you saying sand? Sand on my knees, sand. It's, it's very odd. And then you go to like places like Dunn's and it is like a holiday camp for menopausal yeah. women. They're just like, oh, we're just, I just decided to get a job so that I could have the chats with people and we don't care about any. And then you're kind of going, I miss the Germans now. Yeah. You know, I want to go back to them. They're very efficient because yeah. they're like, that's right, Mary. And they're scanning <laughs> stuff through and it's not even scanning. They're like, that's it, girl. And you scan that thing three times. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. 11 o'clock. <laughs> Mm, yeah, what's that? And that makes me equally as anxious. Fourth Tuesday of the month. <laughs> yeah, Burgundy. Mm-hmm. I need to find that happy medium. Yeah. Till till person, you know, yeah. that, that's like not quite the speed of Aldi and, and Lidl, but not quite as slow as other supermarkets. Do you know, I it, want that happy medium. It's Tesco. It's Tesco. I've never once had my stuff scanned in Tesco and I've never been under pressure, but also they've been focused on me. And that's what I want. (laughs) I want it to be all about me. But I want them to be like, we're here for you. Now, do you like the self-scanners? Also not a sponsor. Circle K (laughs) and Tesco, not a sponsor. Yes. Do you like the self-scanners? I do. I love the self-scanners. I do. I fucking, I don't like the cheeky fucker that's talking on them though. Oh, unexpected item. It's like, you're you're in a supermarket. What's fucking so unexpected like? (laughs) How is my, how is my shopping bag? Am I on the scanner? (laughs) I don't think so. <laughs> Deals personalise their the voices and the self scanners. Are you serious? Oh, oh my so god! So it's like it's like boop, Lorraine, oh, you're, you're so hot. <laughs> Not that I've, quite personalised, but they. I wanted to fuck you for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> they have like Elvis. Unexpected item in baggage area. It's my heart. Don't break it. They have. I went before and they had Elvis. Doing the like you'd, you'd scan through and it would go Elvis. Elvis. Fuck off. You'd go uh, rather than like beeping, it would go uh huh huh. <laughs> no. I swear to God, no. they've had different ones as well. They've had Are different you serious? ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're great for that. Oh, that so. could go wrong though, couldn't it? <laughs> now then, now then. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a bit and more in that. Bop the book. <laughs> I think you like how this one ends. Oh, I forgot about Trolley Man. <laughs> oh, okay. He's having a fucking conniption though, isn't he? He is not happy with those trolleys. Just notice the footwear. The footwear. Mm. You're not going to make me tick. No, 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 oh, no. Oh, fucking no. hell. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. I thought of all the things that could go wrong. <laughs> fucking hell. Oh, I- yeah, but fuck off. Damn, cart man. Got me out here picking up cars. Is <laughs> <laughs> he wearing cowboy boots? <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Cowboy boots don't look good without jeans over them, do they? <laughs> no, they really they don't. Really They're don't. like all over the shop. I'm not sure why you'd need to wear cowboy boots as a trolley guy in Walmart. I'm not sure why you'd ever have to wear cowboy boots unless you're a cowboy <laughs> or a line dancer. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Yeah. What's the correct What's the correct um, leggage for, for boots? What do you mean? Cowboy boots. Do mm. the jeans go over them or in them? Because they're quite wide. I suppose it could be either. I've seen both. Men? Over. Yeah. 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 Probably. Yeah. 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 Unless yeah. they're fucking stripping for you or something. <laughs> like. It's a bit, a bit odd. Uh, yeah. I feel like you're asking because you've got a, a pair of cowboy I boots. I would love, I actually would love, I would love a pair of cowboy boots. I'd love a Stetson. You know, I want to move to Texas. That's my like dream. Mm. That's my like big dream. Move to Texas. Move to Texas. Yeah. Where is Stetson? I can't handle heat over 12 degrees Celsius. Well, best of luck in Texas but, then. Yeah, but everything's air conditioned. 
So I reckon I'd be able to get through. And a pool, like at the back. And and a, a gingery Irish lad living in Texas. Don't that. call me gingery. <laughs> Don't call me gingery. There's nothing. That's not ginger. It's a little bit. You've you've a ginger beard. Yeah, but it's going grey. So I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be a silver fox in a couple of years. Okay. So this is just this is temporary. Right. Let's wrap up this podcast. Uh, we've okay. got a beat. Oh, are we doing this again? Yeah, okay. we are doing this again. Um, we've got a beat. Okay. We've got a rapper. I must say this was a very tame, tame very, podcast. Very, very subdued. It was, it was actually quite in- intellectual. I don't think it was really now. Ah, it was. We were talking about stuff like, uh, we said big words like manifest. <laughs> and tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I think this was, um, I think we really matured. I think we've really matured yeah, since, see, since last year. Since it, you brought up a penis and I actually... You veered, batted it I, away. I was, I was like, <laughs> this is a no penis zone, I'll let you know. This, no penis passes these lips. <laughs> not today. Not, I'm not saying not ever. Not today. Okay. So where do we need to go from? So, uh, got your words. Okay. So, the words are... And look, this is all we have. Doodle do, doodle do, doodle do, do do. All right. Uh, mustache, oh, wild. <laughs> Tuxedo, sand, Viking, marching band. Yeah. Oh yeah, marching band. Uh, Oprah, manifest. You're cool. Oh yeah, you're cool. Uh, cowboy boots, trolley, dating. I quit. Playboy, Jim Carrey. By the way. Outstanding handwriting. Oh, I, I said think, it last week. But I think there's it's going to look backwards on that, isn't it? It is going to look backwards, <laughs> yeah. But there it is. Look there, you can see through. Look, it's outstanding. Very nice handwriting. Fair play to you. Did he? Did the guy from Galway see your handwriting? Oh, he must stage? have. I'd say he I'd, must have. Yeah, he must have yeah. went penmanship alone. <laughs> so I've seen. I've seen your figure eight. Is it? Maybe that's what he was on the host. I've seen your figure eight. It's outstanding. It's beautiful. Beautiful. All right, let's go. All right. Yeah. Ah. Uh, she. Oh, see, I'm getting more more funky now with it. <laughs> I've got a moustache, some people call it a tash. I got no money, some people call it cash. I'm just a man and I'm kind of mild because sometimes I'm an accountant, but sometimes I'm wild. That's right now, you see me, it's me though. I'm the guy with sand all over my fucking tuxedo. <laughs> yeah, because I'm totally bland, but I love putting the top down and rolling in sand. I'm a total perv. I've got an awful nerve And if I was a tennis player I'd have a bad serve I've got no hand I've got no forearm And everybody thinks That I did this score harm I'll never score Because I'm in this video In this 1984 And I'm not really sure Why I'm here at all Why I'm here to ball Everyone knows That I'm destined to fall now I like to go playing tennis And hiking But I'm here Dressed up as a fucking viking Because I think That that's going to make you wet And don't you know That I can't forget That I also play Play in a marching band Don't you always know That I'm starching grand Because my shirt is tight And my shirt is stiff Everyone knows that I give a whiff To my boyfriend when he's making crafts And he's farting And people know that I hate with the carting A carting is a trolley I'm up for the volley And nobody knows that I'm here for a folly Yeah And listen, it's an opera It's Oprah, it's Dopra And don't you know I'm like Deepak Chopra I'm manifesting things into the space Actually, the next word was manifest That space I just manifested the word manifest It's like I'm a man with a manifest Yeah Now don't you know that I'm so cool and you're you're cool and you're fuck you and you're a fool and I just quit the job I'm totally gone everyone knows that I'm the kind of guy that wants one good fucking job to work for a living and everybody's taken but I'm the one that's given and I'm just the guy who's down with my roots cause I'm pushing trolleys round in fucking cowboy boots yeah everyone knows that is the trolley I already said it before but I'm back in the volley I've got another word here the word is dating those guys made videos they'll never be amazing yeah because those videos were the drizzling shit and everybody knows that if you're quizzling it's I quit because quitting's what you do when you give up a job and fuck you's what you do when you point at a knob and I'm just this guy and I want to say playboy and playboy for this joy and my joy and his joy and everyone knows that the pages don't stick because I'm not the guy who's a prick who's about 65 saying I like playboy in New Yorker and this guy is kind of like a dorker and a porker this guy wants to be here for a quarter of another century but he's probably dead oh shit that's right now I'm feeling very 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 funny like my man Jim Carrey wearing a mask 
all you're going to hear him bask and I just fucked up and that's all right. It's like a flask of words and there's a drizzle at the end. Everybody knows we're at the final bend because I'm the kind of guy, I'm stable guy. I love his best movie, fucking Cable Guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every single word you hit it. You did fuck up a little bit there. Yeah, but you wouldn't notice. You wouldn't notice. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. This is a good podcast. I like this. There was a there was a little energy. There was a little direction energy change in it. I liked it. We got a little bit deep. You were talking about manifesting, yeah. and something did manifest a change in this podcast. And a guy at the start of this in the dating video said, "I I enjoy deep conversations deep into the night." See, that's what it is. I that's enjoy what deep it is. conversations deep. Into the night. Was that the Matthew McConaughey? It was. That was Matthew it McConaughey. It was Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, changed Yeah, it. and it, it, behind this background, it is night time. Uh, we are deep into it. <laughs> and we did have deep conversations. I'm wondering, when I get home, is there going to be a guy with candles and champagne standing <laughs> at my bath? Because I'm having a oh, bit of I a fucking so. freak out. Uh, do you want to text that guy back? You have to message. Did you message him back at all? No. You didn't? No, I didn't oh, message him no, back. no, you can't do that to him. No, I thought it was too funny though. Well, Just will you message it. him back? Oh, okay. What'll I say? Message him back. Okay. And say. I like he's never going to listen to this anyway. Say. Okay, you ready? Oh, okay. Do you Hang do on. you accept the challenge of saying whatever I say? Okay. Okay. Hang on now. Right. Okay. Oh, hey. Sorry, was very busy. Hey. Sorry, was very busy. Now he's seen that you're typing as well, probably on his phone. <laughs> Doesn't he? Yeah. Does that come up? Does that oh, come yeah, up? Oh, it says typing. Oh, yeah. no. Okay. Um, I've killed three people and I don't know how to stop. Type it. Type it. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I want to. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I want to. Can you keep a secret? If not, we're looking at number five. <laughs> Like, actually, do you know, I, I, I didn't think your <laughs> yeah, figure yeah, was that how, good. This is how you get rid of people. Can you, what do you say? I don't can know. you keep a secret? Can you keep a secret? Yeah, just leave it at that. <laughs> and send. Send it. <laughs> You're a fucking lunatic. I can't believe you said that. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's like a lot has changed <laughs> A lot has changed oh. in eight years <laughs> shall report oh. back next week. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, he's online. Ah. He's online. No. <laughs> oh. oh, I think I'm going to fucking pass out. Oh my god. Oh. <sighs> Oh. I'm not opening that again. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, that was fucking brilliant. Now, if anyone hasn't said what I said throughout the whole episode, <laughs> you've done it. You've fucking, you've bit the bullet. Everyone else has to do it now. I've killed four people. I don't know how to stop. And sometimes like, I don't sorry, know if I want to. It was just to. my affirmation for today. Sorry Oh about my that. God, that is fucking hilarious. Oh, oh how am I going to get through this? <laughs> oh, uh, leave a review. <laughs> leave a review. Leave a review. Tell a friend. <laughs> oh. Repeat the affirmation. Repeat the affirmation. Tell a friend. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. I may not be on Facebook anymore. We're on Instagram <laughs> at Unforeseen Pod. It's probably on there somewhere. 
Oh my god, my fucking face. <laughs> Send us an email to, uh, to unforeseenpod. Yeah. At gmail. <laughs> Okay. gmail.com <laughs> send us in suggestions and videos <laughs> oh my god send us in audio clips of of yourselves saying the affirmation oh my god do that and please. tell us where you're saying it like yes. on the bus or whatever and say it as loud as you can <laughs> I want the ambient sound of a number 8 bus or wherever you are oh if you're in Detroit or something oh that's amazing Oh, thank you so much. That was such a great episode. I actually really enjoyed that. And I, I, uh, <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Have a good week. Bye bye. <laughs>